Sleepers Podcast, Thursday, March 28th. The Sweet 16 has arrived, and I've missed a couple days of no basketball. Like that, that's I'm glad that's over with. Now basketball's back. How are you, Cardi? Good. Everything good? Yeah. This is your first back-to-back hat day in a while. Oh, uh, wearing the same hat two days in a row? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what? I, you know, <laughs> Well, I talk to you every day, and I, I'm a social cues guy. I'm a very, like, observant, astute guy, uh, if people don't know that. So, like, little things like that I notice, and I just – I like to get I like to get on it at ground level if it needs yeah. to be attacked at that point. Are we good? That's it. Well, yes or no question. As you know, before we just clicked record, I said to you five seconds ago, thanks for telling me I look like I've been in a wind turbine. And then I grabbed the hat that was sitting nearest to me and put it on. So, as you know already. We have way too large of a Purdue following, which also means we have a large engineering following. So, you can't say false things like you look like you were in a wind turbine. If you were in a wind turbine, you would be dead. I feel like you're (laughs) all over me this episode. I got to be like, I'm on an island ISO one-on-one and I'm in hell right now. Yeah. Well, I couldn't sleep last night because you put me in an absolute tizzy for an hour and a half. You came with some crazy takes, man. Let's just call it what it is. We had to record a couple of previews last night and your takes were ridiculous. One of your takes we're going to get to in this episode, you have a dusty may take that we're going to get to. Uh, we also have some John Calipari news. He's back in Kentucky. We're going to talk about that. And we're going to finish with one bold prediction for every team in the Sweet 16 in honor of this beautiful round of college basketball March Madness that will begin today. All right. Uh, should we start with comments, though? What's the YouTube comment of the day? We can. Um, let's see here. Also, i got to stop saying that. Someone someone texted me, uh, a good friend of ours, and was like, you start every YouTube comment with a, let me see here. Do I do that every time? Every time. I always honestly I thought it was a bit like it was for the comedy. No. <laughs> Every single time you know it's coming and you go, ah, let's see here. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I need to cut that out. That's not that's not it's my good. bag. That's not my bag. Um let's see here. Da, da, da. <laughs> this comes from Sam Fredder. Uh, and this was on our player draft video, which, by the way, astounding victory for me, according to the comments, which is probably correct. Uh, Coleman over Filipowski with a bunch of question marks and a lot of likes on that. I would just like to explain myself a little bit when it comes to this. In a player draft, fit is very important along with talent. I have the best big on my team in the country. I need a foreman that compliments him and his abilities very, very well and is versatile. That's why I went with Coleman over Flip. And I'm not saying that Flip isn't versatile or good, but I just like the I like the fit of having Coleman at the four spot next to next to Edie. So you said all the comments are saying you won the draft and you love it, but then the comment you read was blasting you for making a bad pick. Yep. Also, I've seen the com- there's only four comments on this video, and none of them are saying that you won the draft. I'm, I'm, are you, I'm, I think you're looking at the wrong comments. I don't think so, Cart. I don't think so. I think I like Cart. Cart wins the draft easy. I think you need to, I think you need to refresh it, man. Our so comments. You had one comment. Winning. So you had one comment that says Cart wins the draft. It's one more than you. Just saying, man. A little bit of an exaggeration. It's okay. Uh, this is going to be a mental battle episode. I can already tell. This is like you and I are coming in on edge. You're right. We stayed up till one in the morning last night doing "Is Dusty May a Good Coach?" And uh, apparently, we're the, we're feeling the effects of that. Let's get to the actual comments from the Discord. If you want to join the Discord, there's a link in the description of this video. How many Discord members are we at right now? You asking me? 
I think it's like 270 something, I think. 271. I have, absolutely, I have absolutely zero clue. Okay. Well, probably should have known that. Anyways, uh, you can join. You're, you're, you're head of Discord. I wouldn't say that's been a defined role. Yeah, but part of the part of the sleepers, you know, business model is we just kind of assign each other roles and don't even make it known. Okay. So that's why like, you you carry zero obligation to our Discord portion of the business? Like you you don't even have to be in there? No, but like like you're head of HR. Discord falls we under that. You don't have HR. Board. Dion's head of HR. Yeah, we let Dion go like three weeks ago. No, we didn't. Yeah, I didn't tell you. I did. <laughs> you you communicated to Dion. He's been there like was a oh. couple. There was, there was a couple DMs and complaints against Dion, and then him abusing his power, and he had to be let go. Got it. I am very unaware of this. Uh, okay, whatever. Join the Discord. If we get to 300 by the end of the NCAA tournament, I'm getting a tattoo, but we're like 29 people away from that. So uh, shout out to the new Discord members as well. We had a huge flurry of them during the first week of the NCAA tournament, so many so that uh, I think it got to a point where I was just forgetting to shout people out. So let me go back really quick and just make sure we do some here. Uh, Catiline BBN, who in the hail? Uh, cool guy one two three Eric NJ Boiler ninety six J Wayne Betts Skirt Vonnegut uh Andy in Colorado Matt I think that might be it nope nope JP 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 seventy one as well welcome to the Discord appreciate all the signups yeah uh last thing on the Discord uh if you're looking for the best way to support us and what we do. Sleep, uh, the Discord is a great way to do that. And in my personal opinion, it comes with a little bit something more than just like you can support us while also being a part of what I think is a pretty great community instead of just like, I don't know, we open up a Twitter tip jar or a YouTube tip jar and you just throw us a couple bucks or something like that. I think this is one is a great combination of you can support us while also being a part of this Discord community, which we are trying to grow and bring new things into every day. Uh, we got some cool ideas lined up for the offseason as well. Great stuff during this March Madness with games, game threads, conversation, all that, while at the same time supporting us. So if you are looking for ways to support us and what we do with the previews, recaps, daily episodes, all that, the best way to do that, in my opinion, Besides just supporting us organically and liking and everything, we want to throw a little something on top of that. Join the Discord. Give it a go. Join on your desktop. $9.99 a month. I think it's worth it. And if you want to not support us, the best way to do so would be to join the Discord and then immediately leave the Discord. That would hurt way more than it would if you just never joined the Discord. So, yeah. uh, speaking people, of... People... People think leaving a comment on the YouTube saying, like, I'm done with this. I'm never watching this, like, really gets to us. I mean, we do feel that. That hurts a little bit. But the ones that are lasting hurt are the people that have joined the Discord and left. Yeah. Those are the ones that got away. There's a there's a sting there. Speaking of that, Sully. Come home, Sully. Okay? Sully, Sully was our Kentucky fan. Sully couldn't take the Kentucky loss. Sully had to get out of the Discord. Sully's DMing us on Twitter saying, I'll be back. Sully, come on. Come into my warm, gentle arms. Sully, I got a hug for you right here, my friend. We can just cuddle. We can just coddle each other through this March Madness, Sully. Come home. Uh, okay, we read comments from the Discord every single day as well, so you become part of the show. We start today with Tune, who says, Cart doesn't need the transfer portal to purchase a deck of cards in order to play a great game. He has been developing the perfect duffel bag setup with cards he already has. He has made big runs in previous phases, but now towards the end of the night says he will die trying to get his final four to complete his run. I have cards in my bag. Yeah, so you don't need cards because you already have cards. You're Tom Izzo with cards. But if my cards weren't working, if my cards were causing losses every single every single time I play, I would get new cards. Like if if I had a card that was a little bit scratched up or bent so that you could tell what card it is, 
and I'm playing a game that requires like, you know, a little bit of hiding your cards, concealing what you have, I would get new cards. When's the last time you even used your cards? When's the last time I um you if you don't have an immediate answer for me, you're Sissokoing with your cards right now. That's what's happening here. No, but I mean sometimes the people around you are really dependent on whether you bring the cards out or not. I think the last time I brought them out was I played Spike Malice. You ever play Spike Malice? No, and honestly, I think you're making up the names of these games. I I swear to God, no. You, anyone who watches this, please tell Greg that Spike Malice is an actual card game. I think it's a Polish card game, actually. At least I learned it from my mom's side of the family. Sounds extremely Polish. Yeah, I, and it's a fun game. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, I Mayner says 96 team tournament expansion idea for the week after the conference tournaments, the committee selects 64 at large bids. The selection committee seeds them one through 64 and we get a week of playing games before the tournament starts. Selection committee then seeds the remaining field of 64 teams. We could also rebrand the NIT as this play in round. These are the teams that would have been in the NIT anyway. Your thoughts? No, just make the tournament. If it's going to expand, I like this idea. Like, if it's going to expand anyway, why not? But I'm just, I'm just, just make it. Just make it. Don't put it in the committee's hands. Just make it. Like, I, I feel bad for Indiana State fans. I truly do, but just make it. Just win that last game. Hmm. Just, just make win. It. Yeah, just make it. Like, stop, stop blaming others. Just make it. Just win a game. Make it. Very easily said. Hire Kevin Paga. Uh, Sparty for life says, where do you guys stand on expanding the NCAA basketball tournament? Lots of expansion talk today. I feel like they shouldn't mess with greatness. Have any of the last four to eight teams in the field ever done anything except for maybe one upset? I say leave well enough alone. I'm good. I'm no expansion for me. 68 is good. Uh, yeah, I would prefer it stay the same as well, but Hey, never know. Uh, scrolling down, Lyrics says, should Houston be the most shook team with a legit chance to win it all after breaking down on the train tracks and nearly getting rolled by A&M? Also, shout out to anyone who pretends they can know how to stack the deck in spades and has the one paranoid friend convinced they do. Y'all know who you are. First of all, that's facts. Um, did he say that? I, I might have misunderstood the Houston part. Could you say that one more time? Should Houston be the most concerned, basically, of the one seeds, the most shook team after almost losing to a and No, because I think that out of the one seeds, they might have played the best team. Really? In the second round, yeah. A lot of love for A&M there. Um I mean, dude, well, Utah State was good this year. I can't throw that out. But, like, if if you're doing, like, a, if you're doing a ranking of Northwestern, uh, Texas A&M, Utah State, Michigan State, how are you ranking those four? With Northwestern's injuries, probably. Yes. Probably A&M at one. But, I don't know. Houston was up 12 with a minute left. Like, that game – it, it's some crazy shit happened at the end. I didn't feel like Houston was like in danger. Yeah, me until either. the final minute. Yeah, I, yeah, I feel the same way. I'm just, I'm throwing, I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, as far as who they went against, I, you know where I stand on that. I think the one seeds are on a collision course to the final four together. Minus maybe North Carolina loses, maybe they don't. But I thought you had Duke winning. I do have Duke beating Houston this week, but my original oh. bracket had the three ones. Like I don't think Houston should be scared of Duke. If got, they, yeah, got you. Uh, Lyric says, your Amazon package gets delivered to the wrong address. A neighbor you've never met brings it to your house and tries to put it on the porch and hurry away. But you open the door and see they've opened your package with a box cutter, obviously to see if it was something they wanted. Do you bow up or ignore it and just say thank you? Uh, I just say thank you. I've been in this situation before. I've actually like opened up a package just because it was at my doorstep. And then I like looked inside and I was like, wait, what is this? Like, I didn't order this. Um, and then I noticed that it's my neighbors and I went over there and I like knocked on his door and gave it to him. And I'd actually never met him before. That was our first interaction. Um, and he got, he bought golf balls, by the way, for whoever was wondering. And I was like, I didn't buy these. Could have easily kept them. But um, yeah, I, I think you just say thank you. I don't think the opening of the package necessarily means they were trying to look inside and see if they wanted it. 
I would say thank you. Yeah, I don't know. I'm. I don't think I'm overly confrontational in person, though. But do you take the opening of the package as a, they want to see what's inside, or they just open the package? Because like when a package comes to my door, like I'm just I, some, I'm, I just open it. You're not reading the sticker; you're just automatically opening it. Yeah, like I'll look at the box maybe and see if the box is a little bit different or like what where it came from. But you know, sometimes just a quick open, open, open. Maybe. I mean, maybe I I think I would just take it, say thank you, but then keep a mental note and then maybe uh, keep an eye out for if there's any packages on his porch. I feel like you're I feel like you're a true sicko. Like you would you would get some pet or you would take a package off your porch, put it on your neighbor's porch, see how they react after that. That would be good, too. Like just put progressively weirder, worse things in a box and see if my neighbor keeps taking it. That'd be fun. Yeah. yeah, I don't think you want to be neighbors with me. I think that's one of my takeaways from this exercise. Yeah, I don't like your neighbors. You don't know my neighbors. I have a great neighbor. Yeah, but they no. Nah, then they then they hit your house with a tree. That was a bad moment. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, some neighbors are good. Some not. Yeah, did find out in the state of Michigan if a neighbor's tree falls into your yard, it's your responsibility to get the tree removed. Crazy. Yeah, I hate that. You know, that's like a thing with like all tree elements too. Like there's a massive tree in my neighbor's yard and all the leaves fall into our yard and they like get in our gutters and all this stuff. And it's, it's so annoying, but like, it's, it's our responsibility. Tough, tough times. Uh, Purdue Pete says universally the quote Gonzaga is a different team than November narrative has been an emphasis heading into the Purdue rematch. A good deal of that heavy lifting is placed on wins against Kentucky and St. Mary's on the road. Is that more impressive than winning at Illinois, who is universally being placed in the top five of remaining teams left in the tournament? Really starting to feel like grasping at straws to hype a matchup between the top three team in the sport and a team that many thought might miss the tournament in mid-February. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess maybe you might be pushing it a little bit. Uh, I talked about who Gonzaga actually beat in that stretch and like why their offense is regarded as so good um, because they play some kind of bad defensive teams. But um, yeah, I don't know. Like even in that, even in that game that was at Illinois, like Purdue won. Did Purdue play great? No, they were Not trailing. Really. They were trailing thirty five of the minutes of the game. Uh. Yeah, look, the Illinois win for Purdue might be the most impressive singular result of any of them, although I would argue going into Rupp and dominating Kentucky for 40 minutes is arguably more impressive than squeaking out a win at Illinois. Uh, Probably similar results, but the point is it's not about any one individual result. It's about how you've played for two months, and it's well documented at this point Purdue was in a lot of close games with mediocre teams throughout the last two months. They like by all analytics you can possibly search. Purdue is not playing at the same level or at least coming into the NCAA tournament was not playing at the same level that they were in November. Gonzaga has done the opposite. Gonzaga was a 20 to 25 best team in the sport for the first two months. And since January, they've been a top 10 team in the sport. You can play the schedule game if you want to diminish it, or you can just trust what the metrics and analytics say. Like, and look, analytics aren't everything. I've said that before. Like they, they propped up some big 12 teams. They propped up the SEC teams who played nobody. That's probably happening with Gonzaga. They're getting credit for winning games by 40 against teams, but no, like it's not, they're not a bubble team. They're not a team that was supposed to miss the tournament. This team's legitimately good. They're legitimately great offensively right now and have been for two and a half months. So if the matchup's getting hyped, it's because Gonzaga's been playing well. Um, it's not because of anything being propped up. And by the way, like I don't I don't know that anyone except for us is universally propping up Illinois either. Um like that's uh, where are they on Kempom right now? Like, they're 10th. So they're the ninth best team in the field right now for Kempom. Like, I, I think Andy Katz and us are saying we believe in Illinois for obvious reasons. But, like, I don't, think, people. 
don't think anyone universally is like gassing them up and ignoring and not giving credit to Purdue. This is happening for sure in our Discord based on the Illinois thread we've been in and some of the com- conversation with Purdue people this week. We've reached the point of the season where every fan of their team is going to super downplay the team they're playing. And that's interesting to me. I don't think I would go that route. Like, I think maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like in the past when Michigan's been like in the Sweet 16, if I'm playing like like Texas Tech a couple years ago, I'm not coming into that game being like, Michigan by 12, Texas Tech hasn't even done anything. Like, I'd almost do the opposite. I'd be like more afraid of them on paper <laughs> for whatever they've done. Uh, right now, like the, the Illinois dialogue is like Iowa State. They, they can't score with us. They're nothing. And like Purdue seems to be doing the same with Gonzaga. And it's just, it's interesting to me. The Illinois ones are insane. Like calling them like rich man's Maryland or something like that. I'm like, this is, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's a good thing we made the team specific threads too, because it would be a really chaotic week this week. If, if other fans could see what the current fans are saying and look, believe in your team, support your team. But like, I would beg people to watch more Iowa State before this game and, like, take them seriously first. Uh, if Illinois gets a huge win in this game, it's because they they earned it and they did awesome. Like, But Iowa State's really good. And Gonzaga's playing really good right now, too. Purdue's going to have to earn it. Yeah, I agree. Burner says, uh, I'm sure I'm going to get clowned for this, but since I'm new here, how are Greg and Carter friends? How did sleepers come to be? Met in early college years. Uh instantly just kind of just buoyed up hit it off both had the same interests had the same friends uh and then sometime like maybe like three years ago after like dabbling in sleepers a little bit and like podcasting just because we talk sports all the time we decided to buy some microphones a camera and a ring light and take it seriously and since then we just done our best to grow it and here we are I do uh, – we get this question like once every three months from new people that show up, which is great. I don't mean to clown you for that, Burner. Um, I do think we could start working in creative lies every time we have to answer this stuff. Because, yeah, like, we're going to keep getting asked it. and We should get more elaborate and elaborate with crazy stories every time. I was I was considering pulling out of, like, yeah, I I got hit by a car and Greg saw it happen and he carried me to the hospital. Yeah, I think for the next time this happens, let's just know mentally that's a bit we're going to do. Like, the story gets wilder and wilder as it goes. Uh, But yeah, it's pretty pretty boring story. Uh, Lost my spot in Discord. Looks like Ryan the Lion is sending uh, charts. That's exciting. And diagrams. Uh, Dylan Terpster says, I can't wait for Michigan State to be worse than Michigan next year. There's a real chance that happens. Probably not. Probably not. Y'all, y'all got a Hall of Famer at coach. Like I, I got a little old Dusty, second place in the American Dusty. You know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, Ryan the Lion says, "Here's my college basketball coach Venn diagram. It's actually a great Venn diagram. Uh, there's different quadrants for good on the grill, handsome, and great coach." Uh, great coaches are Brad Underwood and Izzo. Good on the grill. I'd like your thoughts on this one. Good on the grill is Ben Johnson and Mike Woodson. Handsome, little little little, little, little racismo, little racismo in there. Ha- handsome is uh, Jake Diebler and Chris Collins, and then good on the grill and handsome is Fred Hoiberg. Good on the grill and great coach is Matt Painter. Handsome and great coach is Dusty May. And then at the heart of it all, good on the grill, handsome and great coach is Jay Wright. It's a funny diagram. My one takeaway from that is I don't think Mike Woodson is good on the grill. Really? Yeah. Why? A couple of reasons. One, I think that he would rather cook just over like an actual fire pit. Like he strikes me as that type. Um, and I don't know. I just, I, I, something about somebody grilling with a goatee scares me. Mm. Okay. Like I wouldn't trust Bray. I wouldn't trust Braden Smith to grill me anything. Yeah. I think that's a little harsh. 
I would trust Braden with my life, though. That's just me personally. Uh, he has Kevin Willard in a tier called Overwhelmingly Bad. Or no, Overwhelmingly Ball. Sorry. <laughs> Could have put Mike Woodson in that one, too, right? I love this diagram. Can we it's post a, it? It's a really good diagram. Uh, and then Slimy, Bill Self, and Fran McCaffrey are in the Slimy circle, but Bill Self overlaps with great coach. Greg Gard not in any of these? Yeah, where, where's Gard's got to be somewhere. I mean, is he a great coach or handsome or good on the grill? I guess maybe not. Ryan might have nailed this. I like this exercise. Uh, okay, scrolling back here. UK says, rank these fall-offs from most catastrophic to least. Flo Rida, Pitbull, Fetty Wap, Calvin Harris, Neo. Ooh. I don't think Calvin Harris has fell off, so he's last. Pitbull low-key hasn't really fell off either, so he's probably fourth. Fetty Wap really fell off. He came on strong. I, man, Fetty Wap back in our college days, crazy. Crazy run by him. Yeah, yeah. Man, just he. Yeah. With one eye. I'm like, hey, what's up? Hello. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that was a hit. Slapper. <laughs> uh, so I think I go Fetty, Florida. Florida was in, honestly, Florida wasn't that good. I think Florida, okay, Florida Fetty, maximized Fetty, their time. Yeah, Fetty won, Neo two, because Neo right. had Neo has hits boy who we you ever like dipped into like a neo like just dive into it like you haven't listened to it in a while gotta change my answering machine now that i'm alone just just some hey. heat with a massive noggin um and then neo, Rod- should, neo should have had like a 10-year career though like so i i think neo deserves to be near the top of this list because of that like i there's a world where neo ends up usher and I'm thinking about a smile, a having our first child. Um, I'm turning off the radio. Yeah. All right. I uh, I think, yeah, Flo Rida maximized their time. I'm good with Pitbull and Calvin Harris at the bottom. So Fetty Wap 1, Neo 2, Flo Rida 3, Pitbull, Calvin Harris 4, 5. UK's next one, also due to recent events, settled the debate and ranked these artists. Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, Drake. Me personally, it is Drake, J. Cole, Kendrick. I love all three though. I want to make that very, very clear. Like those are the those are the big three for me. Do you love all three? Yeah, I do. Huh. You hate certain albums of some of the three. I do. Okay. But like I I I but overall like Kendrick, like is it Section fair to 80, say it, it, Section is, 80, Good Kid, Mad City, like damn, all that's good. Is it fair to say that of the three, the artist with the least flops is J. Cole? Yeah, probably. I mean, the only the only like flop I would say for J. Cole is um was it was it King of Diamonds? I don't know what King of Diamonds is. I might have the wrong one on that. Um, but I'm also just, like, also the, Drake, Drake, Drake's like honestly, never mind is awful. Yeah, that's that's the only reason I throw this out is uh, like Drake has one horrible album to me. Right, but like, also horrible. like Kendrick has one horrible album as well. Kendrick has more than one horrible project, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I didn't want to go there, but yeah, that's so. But my answer is the same as yours: is Drake, J Cole. Kendrick, but I always have had a soft spot for J. Cole. He's my favorite rapper when I was in college and high school and all that. Um mixtape J. Cole I still think is unmatched. Like I I would take like I'm telling my I'm telling my grandkids, grandkids about Friday Night Lights and Sideline yeah. Story. I literally would, I, I I would take Friday Night Lights up there with the best Drake projects. Um but to me like Drake Drake took a new level once he actually went mainstream that J. Cole did not. And this and this will all be mine? Yeah. Like, crazy, crazy. Oh, man. Uh, I don't like the fact that there's beef going on here. I don't like that. I kind of do, only because I like I like follow ups to beef. Like I think that J Cole has done a great job dropping stuff if people like talk shit about him. Yeah. Like I think that some great hits have come out of people talking shit about Drake. 
Um, so like, I'm actually excited for whatever follow up might come after this. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, I'm just glad Kendrick Lamar is dropping music. That's that's nice. Where have you been, sis? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, tough. Uh, Kevin Freeman, unsung goat, says, as the father of a 13-year-old, I explain talent versus skill to him like this. Talent is what you have. Skill is what you earn. That's a bar, first of all. For example, there are a lot of people who have innate abilities who will never either be exposed to something where they could develop skills that utilize their talent ability or who will not put in the work and eventually lose out to people with less talent and develop more skill. The goats have the talent and put in the work to be unmatched with their skills. Think Jordan and his 1,000 shots a day. On a completely unrelated note, the fact you think Illinois fans are more reasonable than UConn fans when you have a deep familiarity with uh, Coleman's burner is bonkers. I want to take the second half of this, then I'll let Carr take the first half of this. Um, To my exposure of UConn fans and Illinois fans, Illinois fans are self-aware sometimes, have not seen UConn fans be self-aware at all. The only energy I've been exposed to from UConn fans is like, I will burn you to a crisp. You Illinois fans are much more just like, yeah, we wish we were Purdue, but we're not. Like that's that's been a thing from Illinois. Like they are aware of that. I don't believe that UConn fit because UConn's at the top of the sport. That's part of it. They have nothing to be self-aware about. They just get to be lunatics. That's my read on it. What's uh, your thoughts on the first part of the comment? That's, I mean, I really have no follow up comments. That's pretty accurate in bars. Like so that, you can have all you, you can have all the skill in the world, but like you gotta have some talent along with that. And there's plenty of talented people who don't put in the work to develop skills and end up being unrealized, basically as what they could be. So Dane that's Danger, a, that's, that's in anything. Dane Danger has more talent than Zach Eady. Then Zach Eady's just more skilled. I don't like this. I still don't. No, like that. I don't like that. Well, I'm I'm not even addressing that because that's I, I'm not, and I'm the I'm I'm the Dane guy. Okay, I still I still feel like that we don't have a clear definition, but I like that from uh, that comment. That was good. Travis Nelson says the segment on rooting for your Final Fours made me realize I like the teams and games in the Sweet Sixteen and Elite Eight more. I'm interested in most of the Sweet Sixteen matchups and potential Elite Eight games: UNC, Arizona, UConn, Illinois, Purdue versus either than any possible final four games. I think the final four games will be just as good, if not better than those potential elite eight matchups. I agree. I think this, this is the pinnacle of good games. It should get even greater from here. Yeah. The next two weeks are going to be crazy. Shane B says, I work in a job that has some downtime throughout the day. Recently, we've hired an influx of readers. I'm sitting in our office surrounded by people reading books, but I'm just sitting here watching college basketball podcasts on YouTube. Am I the dumbest one in the room or the smartest one in the room? I think you're the smartest. Especially if you're listening to sleepers. Yeah, I think so too. O2, the D O double G says the final four player of the year finalists have been released. I have seen a lot of fans arguing about who is the best, what makes them the best. In a hypothetical one on one half court setting, playground court that has chains for nets, all buckets are worth one point. First to 11, winner takes ball. Who are you guys picking to win? Uh, the four players are Dalton Connect, Jamal Shedd, RJ Davis, and Zach Eady. Did he say unlimited dribbles? There is no comment on dribbles. No comment on dribbles. Probably take connect. I think the answer has to be connect. Connect would torch the little guards. He would torch yeah. them. Uh, yeah. And I think he would torch Edie. I think Shed actually might give connect some issues. You think so? Yeah. Get up in them. I don't think there's anything you can do. He'd just shoot over him. True. Yeah. Uh I Edie also might just win that. I there's a world. Well, I, I don't know. I'd I'd like to see it, honestly, because I think Edie might perform better than people think. All right. Good comments today, everybody. Appreciate you. Let's get to our three topics. Let's open the show with your Dusty May theory. Uh you and I were on a Zoom call privately not recording this last night. Spent about two and a half hours. Debating, I guess you could say. Uh, you you started it all with a theory, though. Do you want to unveil your Dusty May theory? Uh, it, it's still a working, uh, working theory, I would say. But it's centered around the fact that I don't know if Dusty and this 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 might not just be a Dusty thing. This could be an any coach thing. I think that he took the like 
I think he took the job with the least expectations, the least pressure, and took a pay cut because I don't know if he's like a a coach that can go somewhere that's winning is going to be absolutely expected or like his his tenure is going to be over quickly. That's kind of the that's kind of the initial theory, and then the second part of my theory is with this Dusty May thing. And let me preface this by saying. I think Dusty May is a good coach. I think Dusty May was a good hire for Michigan. When you mention what he did in the final four two years ago, I think you also shouldn't ignore what he did this year. And what he did this year was finish second in the conference in the American when he was the most talented team in that conference. And then he went to the conference tournament they bowed out in the semifinals to Temple. And then they went on to the tournament where they lost the game to the Northwestern, a Northwestern team that's missing two starters. And your stars didn't star. Elijah Martin pulled a whole guard. Uh, Boyd was nowhere to be seen. Vlad was good. So, Vlad, not all the stars did. Oh, Boyd. About your stars didn't star. Boyd was nowhere to be seen. That's not sorry. I'm 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 referring. I'm, I'm referring. To, I'm I'm referring to the four guys that were that we are. Yeah, let's just make, make no mistake. Boyd is not a star. Boyd is a role player. And Got even it. if All he right. comes to Michigan, he is a role player. So three stars then? Is that? I think saying they have three stars is fair. Yeah, I think so. Okay, three. So out of the out of the three stars one star showed up but that doesn't even really really mean anything in the in the context of this all i'm saying is that while mentioning what he did in the final four and getting there which was great you need to also acknowledge that this year he did the things i just stated yeah uh here's how i imagine the day of the northwestern game went for dusty may i imagine he woke up got a coffee i assume he likes black coffee because you know he attacks the day he's not afraid of a challenge uh i think he when I think I, he is afraid of a challenge though well that's your own opinion i think it's rooted in hate i think he went for a nice little bike ride that's what i think he did probably rode the streets of brooklyn a little bit uh got back to the team hotel and i'd assume he called in elijah martin and john l davis and vlad golden and nick boyd and he said boys take a seat have a seat, boys. We have to go to shoot around in 20 minutes, but I uh, just wanted to have a quick conversation with you all. You know, leave your heart on the floor tonight. What a great opportunity we have to go play in the NCAA tournament again. Let's go do it. With that said, the moment we lose, I'm going to be on a private jet back to Boca. I have a meeting with John Beeline and Ward Manuel, and I'd like all four of you to come to Michigan with me if we lose this game today. That's how I envisioned that morning went. Uh, now, should they have beat Northwestern? Yeah. They all had their foot out the door. Like, they all had the foot out the door. Is the, And is that a sign that Dusty May is a good coach? No, of course not. That's a point against him. But I, I think the writing is pretty obviously on the wall here. Like, this happens with coaches that are, like, clearly going to leave. And that hung over this entire season, for the record. Like, Dusty could have gone to the job last year, could have gone to a bunch of different jobs last year, didn't. Said, let's run it back. Arguably, that was a mistake. I called it out with you during the season. Like, I think Dusty probably hurt his stock a little bit, choosing to play the run it back card and come back when everybody knew this was the last dance. This was like the Michael Jordan final year. Oh, shit, everybody knows he's leaving. That's a problem. That's hard. It's hard to be a successful organization if everybody knows there's an expiration date at the end of this. So... There was, there was an obvious, like there was no world where Dusty May doesn't take a different job, whatever the best job was this summer. And I think he's lucky. I think he's fortunate that at the end of this, Louisville still wanted him and Michigan wanted him and Indiana decided they didn't want him. Otherwise he would be at Indiana right now. So like I, I in a weird way, I think he kind of cost him some things over the course of the season. With that said, trying to frame this season as if, it's a massive failure, I think, is unfair to him. Uh, look, I'm not saying it's not a failure, and he's not either. He hit the, the the introductory thing with Michigan. He's like, yeah, we failed. We didn't accomplish any of our goals. Hand up. Like, that's they're saying that, and I think that's accurate. With that said, this team got an eight seed. 
This team went 14 and 4 in conference. It's not like they're bad in the American. They went 14 and 4 and lost to South Florida. So they lost the conference. Like that sucks. They also were really good in the non-con. Like really good. Like better than they were supposed to be in the non-con. From the first game of the season to the end of December, they went from 36th preseason in Ken Palm. I don't care where they were in the AP poll. They were 36th preseason in Ken Palm up to 10th at the end of December in two months because they beat Arizona, because they beat Texas A&M. Like, and then, <laughs> it was good. And then, and then where they finish? Where did they finish the end of the year? Yeah. 46th. Yes, because they lost a bunch of bad games at conference. But, like, that's – I think you're you're doing the rival fan hate thing, which is totally fair. You should do that. That's fine. But I think framing this season as some massive failure is not accurate. A massive failure would have been missing the tournament. A massive failure would have been finishing like fifth in the American. Uh, I, I never said the words massive failure. All I said is that while addressing the Final Four run, let's just not skip over what happened this year. Like it was good, which – Dusty nobody's, admitted but nobody, nobody's saying it's good. No, nobody, not even Michigan fan, nobody is saying Dusty was good this year. You were you were saying you didn't you say it was good or like okay? What, what were the what were the I'm exact words? I I don't think it was as big of a failure as you're painting it out to be. I think they they were about what they should have been this year. They should have won the conference, yes, but like other than finishing second, going fourteen and four behind a USF team that by the way was sixteen and two. They won a lot of games. Like, I I don't think they underachieved. I think they overachieved in the non-con, to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, I mean, th- that South Florida team won the con. They weren't. They didn't even make the tournament. Yeah. Look, the American so was weird. Mem- in my opinion, Memphis and FAU were the best two teams in that conference, and Memphis fell off a cliff too. So, so last thing, if we were giving them crap for running it back, is he not doing that same thing by just bringing those guys and running it back again at a different, at a different school in a different conference? He might be, I don't know. So that's the the other element of this is the, it's a heavy rumor for those watching this video that don't know this. It's a heavy rumor that John L. Davis, Elijah Martin, Vlad Golden, and Nick Boyd are all coming with dusty made of Michigan. Um, what I have heard is it's in progress and the expectation is that will be the result here. Elijah Martin and John L. Davis are publicly reposting Dusty's Michigan announcements, Michigan gear. Uh, Nick Boy removed FAU basketball from his bio. Like there's, there's signs. That's all I'm saying. A lot, a lot of other players did that too. Are you guys getting Weatherspoon? The only four I've heard of the four that I mentioned. Um, mm-hmm. Now, again, Dusty, in his introductory press conference with Michigan, he spoke to the fact that, like, this team was not 100% locked in last year. They they pride themselves on being 100 out of 100 locker rooms, and they went from 100 out of 100 the good year to, he said, in his words, 95 out of 100 the second year. That, to me, indicated maybe he doesn't want to run it back. Maybe he doesn't want to bring all the same guys. But then you hear he is trying to get the, the main four, and the main four are all very interested. Look, no matter what you want to say here, about those guys, if it's good or bad or not. A um, couple things. One, it's very clear that all of Dusty May's players love Dusty. Very clear. That's a good thing in this era. I didn't know that was a trait of Dusty May until I have become familiar with his game in the last 72 hours. Any player, anyone who has interviewed Dusty, media members, whoever other coaches everyone speaks so highly of the guy he's clearly just a good guy that's refreshing and i like that and if players like dusty may enough to turn down money to stay at florida atlantic and then immediately come with him to ann arbor probably a good sign that he'll do well at michigan in the long term because players want to play for him that's a good thing uh two are these guys that good i have no idea i think john l davis is really good i believe he's one of the most talented guards in the country uh, I think Elijah Martin is a lot better on highlight reels than he's been in games from what I've seen. I think like he's clearly a fun player, an athletic player, a guy who can do a lot of different versatile things. I don't think he's necessarily like a first team all conference guy, even in the American. Um, and I think he's small. Like he's a, I thought he was like six, six. You find out he's six, two. That's interesting how it maps to the Big Ten. I think Vlad Golden's one of the best bigs at the Big Ten immediately if he comes to the Big Ten. I think like he's gonna 
probably be the only footer immediately other than Stephen Crowell in the league and Will Berg, whatever Purdue's big is. So I, I think it's a good sign. I think I think John L. Davis, Martin, and Vlad Golden could be the core of an NCAA tournament team in the Big Ten immediately. And as a Michigan fan, even if all the skeptical shit you're saying about Dusty is true, I'm coming from a season where we won eight games and Will Cheddar started. Uh, like I, my interpretation of what would happen when they hired Dusty was this would take a couple of years and he would have to do the thing. I, I compared it to McMahon at LSU, right? When McMahon took over LSU, it was like, you got to go find 13 guys, figure it out. And McMahon brought a couple guys with him from Murray state and they had a losing record in year one and a slightly better record in year two. And they're still a long way away. So if I can skip a couple of those steps, and get four guys who started in a Final Four two years ago, and yeah, finished 46th on Ken Palm, and we're painting that out to be some horrible disaster of a season. Yeah, that's a huge leap forward for me. I will take 46th on Ken Palm and an eight seed in the NCAA tournament next year. If that is the first year that I can get of Dusty, we skipped like three steps along the way in the rebuild. And I think that's important, and that's part of one of the bonuses of why this was a good hire. So last thing, so if that's the case, was there like no bad hires? Because you just got to be better than you were the last two years. What would what what would have been a like a I'm pissed hire? Like someone who just you hire and they don't bring anybody? Nico Madbed. <laughs> okay, like, so like you hire him and he doesn't bring anybody. That's 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 why. No, I think it's the, I think like the names that were rumored for Michigan were Abdul Rahim from South Florida, uh, Nico Madbed mm-hmm. from Colorado Ooh, State. Huh? The dude who won the conference. Yeah, I, I like AAR. I think he's going to be a really good coach. Because yeah. they had the co-American player of the year. You could have brought him. If they got Darian DeVries, he would have brought Tucker DeVries. Look, I Michigan's roster is in such a dire spot due to Juwan Howard's failures. Bringing one player wasn't going to save anything. Bringing four starters will make you competitive right away. Hey, <laughs> like, you said say four starters. You said, you, you said boy's not a starter. I say he's not a star. You said star. I think Nick Boyd. Oh, you, oh you, you're bringing him in the start? I don't know. I. It depends on how they fill the roster. He has 13 spots to fill, Cart. He has 13. But you know what's easier than filling a team with that needs 13 guys? Filling a team that needs nine guys. Because you brought three stars and a fourth starter with you. Like, that's – there isn't another coach who is going to bring that caliber of guys. And that is a benefit to Dusty, no matter what you want to say about these dudes. John L. Davis would be courted by the best programs in the sport if he wants to hit the portal instead of going to Michigan. Elijah Martin would get high major offers immediately. Vlad Golden would be courted by every school that needs a big man immediately. You would, I know the dirty things you would do to get Vlad Golden and Green and White next year. So we can sit on this Zoom call and act like it's not important and not impressive and we're skeptical of Dusty because this team went 14 and 4 in the American instead of 16 and 2. But like, it's a massive leap forward in year one. I was not expecting that. I thought it would take three years for Dusty to be able to build a roster. And yeah, Michigan fans should be excited about it if this is the core for next season. All right, then. Next topic. I have one more Dusty number for you. Okay. Go ahead, give it to me. Is it the top 100 record one? No, you just, yeah, like all, it was such a bad season, right? All his losses were so bad. No, I'm not going to say. Also, like, I'm just – you're saying that in the first couple years, if it is an exact repeat, because it's an exact repeat of, let's say, this season four times over, right? Let's say, like, this is – this is what he – this is – call it the floor, I guess. Even if – or it might be the ceiling. I don't know what you want to say. You're good with these next four years of Dusty just being a 45th team on Kempom, make the tournament – but you probably want some tournament wins mixed in there, depending on the seating. But that's all That's all you need. I've told you my bar for Dusty, at least to start, is make the tournament every season. Okay. I, I think, how, I think long, if, how, long, how long does that bar last? Well, it depends on what they do, Cart. But, like, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and predict they're going to make the tournament and lose the first game every single season. My interpretation of this would be if Dusty makes the tournament every year, he'll probably have some runs mixed in. Because that's what happens in the tournament. You get fluky. Some years you make a Sweet 16 when you're bad, and some years you lose in the first round when you're good. You know that damn well. So 
I'm not going to say I'm going to fire my coach four years from now because he can't win in the tournament until we see what he can do in the tournament. Oh, shit, we did see him go to a Final Four two years ago. But that doesn't count. Just last year counts. So, like... <laughs> oh, I mean, only the Final Four counts. That's it. That's the no, only it all, one. It, it all counts. And if these, la- if these last two years for Dusty map to what he's about to do at Michigan, effing great. Awesome. Awesome. One top 20 season, then one top 50 season. One with a final four, one with a first round exit. Do that over and over and over again for me at Michigan. I'm ecstatic. A great situation. I'd be ecstatic. I'm just like, right, which brings me back to my original. This is a this is the perfect perfect situation for Dusty, and the perfect hire because there's you're you're acting like there's no expectation. That's your belief on this. Right now, there's none. Just be better than just be better. Just, oh, just make, make, the, make the tournament is the expectation. Which is which is not that hard. I mean, off the roster that he's inheriting, it is. Jace Howard was at the press conference. Like <laughs> Jace Howard thinks he's still in the rotation, even though his dad got fired. This is a tough job right away, man. It's it's not. I mean, it's not really that tough. The only reason it wouldn't be tough is if he's bringing these four guys with him who you claim aren't even that good. I never said that. The guys are good. Those guys are a part of the team, like I said, that did the same thing that you're just like, this team made a Final Four run. But that's all that matters is that they did that Final Four. No, it's also that it's it's not all that matters. It's also that they were a dominant. They won 35 games that season, card. Yeah. And they made a Final (laughs) Four. Yeah. It's not. They, they won, it's they not won, just won, the run. They won thirty, they won 30 games. They, they won thirty games. Well, actually, the, I mean, this mass weren't they at a seed in that final four run? They were a nine seed. They won thirty one regular season games that year. Like that's. It's not. I'm much more impressed with the overall season than I am the fact they got hot and survived the Memphis game. Yeah. Did, but, what, what what conference were they even in? They weren't in the American, were they? They were in the Conference USA. Which that year had North Texas, who was thirty first in the country, UAB, who was forty seventh in the country. They went on the road to Florida and beat Florida in the non con. Like it was a, it was a great season, great season. And then they had a season that wasn't good this past year, and the the bad okay. year. This season was okay. The bad year was a top fifty team with a higher seed than you got the year before in the good year. I'll take it. Like that's if that if you're telling me that's the floor, then I will take that with Dusty every single time. All right, understood. If that's the floor too, if you're calling that no expectations, then fine too. But that's it, it, this it, is it, back it, to it, where it, you're hate and spiteful. No, there's just there's a hundred percent different expectations. That's a fact. What that's do you think? Fact. What do you think Louisville's expectations will be with Richard Petino next year? Uh, probably banners tournament like banners. They, they, they expect banners. It's it's Louisville. <laughs> okay. They expect they expect to make the tournament. They expect to. What is, so what are your to, expectations? They expect to be a factor in the conference. So what are your expectations? For who? For your program. What are your expectations? The opposite of what they've done the last four years. Then how how come everyone's just sitting here okay then? Not it. Don't don't do that. No, I am going to do it because you're you, you're so prestigious and you have these great expectations, right? What's going on? We're having a bad time. Down years. Then what? Why is that okay? It's not. Which it's is not. why which is why I'm unhappy. It's not. Hmm. Which is why I'm unhappy. Huh. Which is why you which is why you shit talk it all the time because it's been it's been bad. Okay. So maybe if Dusty's not winning things, maybe I'll be unhappy. But that'll make that that speaks to me not having goals as a program. What's what's your point on that? You have one. All you got just make the tournament. That's it, and then see what happens from there. Well, if they lose in the first game every year in the tournament, I'll be upset. Yeah, but we we don't know if that's going to happen. No. I don't have a four year sample size of shit like you do. I don't. This is fresh and new. I don't know what's going to happen. All right. So that I I got I I got everything I had to say. All right. Uh we did this for six hours last night. Uh anywhere from in any of that. What'd you say? I feel like we didn't give I feel like there was no Well, you're just you're 
you're not gonna you're not gonna have a, an opinion or a belief in Dusty until you see what Dusty does. I said that Fine. Dusty. I literally said it's a good hire and a good coach. It's a good hire because there's no expectations. Okay, guess we'll see. It's. I mean, it's like I said. There's re- really the expectations in Michigan are with the football team and the football program. There's really not that. There's you can't tell me there's these high expectations for Michigan basketball. Maybe you have high expectations okay. for Michigan basketball, but I really don't think there's that high. And if yeah, I'm wrong, I I don't I don't think Michigan State fans should be telling Michigan fans what their expectations should be. But you guys love to do that, and that's fine. Um, don't don't you do the same shit? Okay. I, uh, how, do you not do you not do you not say that Michigan State should have higher expectations than just carrying on the streak and just making the tournament? I'm confused how you guys are talking down on Michigan's expectations and you guys aren't upset with your own coach. Yeah, I'm confused by that. Maybe you should talk to some different people. I think some a lot of people are upset with our coach. Oh, my bad. I wasn't sure. I don't know how to take your guys' little Twitter hive. I know you guys are busy doing the scouting work for your assistant coaches, so I don't know. All right. Well, I don't like how can you shit on Michigan fans' expectations and not look yourself in the mirror here at all? That's that seems so delusional. I, I think it, no, I think the delusional part of this is is that if this was flip flop, you would be saying the same shit to me. One hundred percent would be saying the same exact shit, probably even worse. And I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is that I'm literally stating a fact on what he did this season. And you feel differently about it than I feel. What do and I? What? What? Good. What am I feeling so different about? I'm like, you I think agree you with think you. that Dusty? You think that Dusty did not have a bad year? No, I don't. I I've said on this call that they didn't meet any of their goals this season. And if so they, if, it, if their it, bad it, season is, it, is, there, is it a, is was it a bad year for Dusty? Yes, yes or no? Okay, yes. that's that we that we agree. That's it. We can move on. It was a bad year. What a sick topic. Yeah, it was. It was very sick. <laughs> like dope. <laughs> so Dusty May stinks. Nope. I just all I want that's all I all I wanted out of that. We, was, we hired a coach coming off a bad year. That sucks. Yeah. And I better I should demand national championships. And if I don't nope. get that from Dusty and his players coming off a bad year, I better start begging for somebody new. Nope. All you need is just at 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 minimum make the tournament and then see what happens. That's probably every that's everybody. I I don't know. I I guess I you need to tell me what my expectation should be. Tell me how to be a fan of my program because I don't know how to do it. I guess. I thought making the tournament was what you're supposed to measure yourself by, but I guess I'm just following what you've done for four years. Now what? I mean, depends. Depends who you talk to. Everyone's different. Guess so. I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed I, to do. I, I, I am not happy with Michigan State's last four years. Hmm. But we already did the same thing. I said if Dusty May did the same thing that Tom Izzo did these last four years, it's completely different because Tom has the long body of work, and this is just Dusty's first four years. Yeah. With I mean, Michigan I do like to, to be clear. Tom Izzo is a better basketball coach than Dusty May, and I would not deny that at all. With that comes success that Tom Izzo's had for two decades. Dusty's had one run. That's it. I don't know. I don't know. Now, now you got me. Dusty stinks. I have no idea. I just hired a fraud. He's tan. He rides his bike, and I need to want more. Who should I? Should I beg for Rick Pitino here? Like, what was the move? Mm-hmm. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do anymore. I'm in shambles. John Calipari's back in Kentucky. Is that good or bad for Kentucky? How does it affect Dusty, do you think? I don't know. He's. I mean, I don't know why we're worried about the second-place American coach. Uh, dumb topic. Ruin this episode. Um, Listen. Like Calipari is in the mold of coaches, and there's a certain amount of coaches out there. Like, you think Calipari is considered like the old guard of coaches at this point? Yeah. So it's like there's 
there's an old guard of coaches that you could probably put in a pot that like have been struggling with like this new NIL, new portal, new everything, basically in the landscape of college basketball. The ones that come to mind right away, Izzo, Coach Cal. Coach Cal is less than I mean, Coach Cal is less than Izzo because Coach Cal is like, you know, again, like being like number three seeds and doing all this stuff. And like he's had some tough tournament uh runs, but like he's been successful in the SEC, like very successful recruiting players, all that. Playing a fun style of basketball, uh, to some. Could have played more defense this year. But I would even put coaches like uh like a Bennett in there. Like the the times are kind of passing them up somewhat, it seems like. And to me, this seems like you're reaching like maybe make or break with those guys. And I'm not saying like make or break like one year and we obsess that this year you're gone. But with how insane Kentucky's fan base is, like they aren't trying to hear that you are getting all these players to the NBA. What does that do for them? That's not hanging banners for them. That's not getting them final fours. That's not getting them long runs in the tournament. The fact that five years from now or five years ago, now you can say that Shea Gilgis Alexander is a max NBA player to MVP or that you had Devin Booker or that you had Anthony Towns and all these guards and all these guards that are getting to the NBA at a certain point. They, I think Kentucky fans have this mindset where they want to see they have a different standard. They want to see like they want to see banners. They want to see final fours and competing for championships. And he he hasn't been doing that, which is like, I don't know, crazy to me, because, I mean, you even brought it up. You would take Coach Cal in a heartbeat. Yes. Right. Yes. As a Michigan State fan in a world where like if Izzo left this year or something like that or something happened with Izzo and we had the chance to hire Coach Cal, I would walk to Lexington and pick him up in one of those bike things that are downtown. What are those? I don't even know what those are called. And I bike him back to Detroit. So I, 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 I don't really, I understand that you could be critical of him and you want him to adjust. And I think he can, because you can get these five stars, you can get these young kids, but mix them in with guys that are older guys that are better. Like, I think that roster construction and, realizing that in the state of college basketball and that old guys are winning is something that needs to be needs to be had. Yeah, I don't think he's going to change. Um I my stance on Cal hasn't changed at all and uh this goes ties very nicely into the last conversation we just had about Dusty May. My expectations are not Kentucky fans expectations. My expectations are apparently low compared to great college basketball programs. Uh to me it's about what you do over 35 games. It's March is fluky. I repeatedly say that if Kentucky is going to fire one of the five best coaches in college basketball history, because he keeps rolling the dice and the dice keep rolling on one instead of on six in the NCAA tournament, like that would be a mistake. In my opinion, it's there's some luck involved here. Jack Golke hitting 10 threes is partially due to luck. It's also partially due to John Calipari not being prepared and their defense not having answers, but it's also partially due to luck. And that's the truth. And people don't like to say that, but March is weird. Weird shit happens and weird shit has continuously happened to Kentucky in the last three years. Um, what to me, my read on this is that like his future is going to come down entirely to if they win the first NCAA tournament game next year, it doesn't, they could, they could go undefeated in the regular season next year, get the number one overall seed. And if they lose to a 16 seed in the first round of the NCAA tournament, he's gone. So I, to me, that's a precarious spot to be in. I don't think uh, as much as I'm saying for me, I would want Cal to still be my coach. I think this was the smart move. I think there's disaster looming here because it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter if they win the SEC championship. It's going to literally all come down to one game, and there's going to be more pressure on those guys in that locker room than on any Kentucky team ever because they're all going to know it comes down to one game. And guys get tight. 18-year-old kids get tight. Cal's not going to change. Cal's not going to switch up how he builds his rosters here. I don't believe that. Um, And I don't think he needs to. I think Cal can still win with this this exact formula. I think uh, the the COVID year coming to an end soon will help him because 18-year-old kids aren't going to be playing 24-year-old kids for many more years. 
And I think we're going to have a youth movement again. It's going to pivot back to what was working a little bit here soon, with especially with the overtime elite dying. More of those elite kids are going to have to choose a college destination. Um, but yeah, I just, I, to me, that's the frustrating part is it's like, it's going to come down to a roulette spin, literally what happens in March for Cal. And it's not, that is the, the most volatile part of being a college basketball coach is what happens in March. A lot of that ends up out of your control. And that would scare me if I'm Cal, I wouldn't want to coach a full season knowing it comes down to one game, no matter what I do before then. Uh, I think the fans are going to lose their effing minds. And I don't think it's any more or less likely that Cal is going to win or lose that game in March than it has been his whole entire career. I just don't. Like, he's in a little bad luck stretch right now. To me, it's a lot of luck involved. So when when do you – because it's it's like the unfortunate part of the business, I guess, is that it does come down to that, which is like – it's unfair if you really think about it, but it's unfortunately like it's the nature of the beast. How many times or how many like years would you say is like, you can stop just like what, at what point are you like, okay, I get it. Like it's March. It's fluky, but like, come on. Um, and uh, but, 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 that, but that, does that come hand in hand with regular season? Like do you have to look at the regular season too. I think if Kentucky has decided that March is the only thing that determines whether he should continue coaching, they should have fired him this offseason. So maybe that's a sign that it's not. No, I think it is. I think I think they had the conversation and said, Cal, you better win next year. And he said, Okay, give it one more chance. That's a crazy way to approach it if you're an AD. Yeah, look, I maybe I'm wrong. I wasn't in the room. I don't know. But um that's my interpretation. Like it's gonna it's gonna but, come down to win. Yeah. But to that question, like let's let's say that Cal does lose the first game of the tournament next year. Let's say it's in the same fashion. Like there are thirteen, there are three seed, it's a fourteen seed. Um, not even depending on who the how good that fourteen seed is. Let's just say it's a fourteen seed. They lose that first game. Do you want as would you bring Cal back? You're the AD. Depends on what. Like, did they win the SEC title? Uh, let's say it's the same as this year. I, I would, but the fan, like, I also got to realize I serve the fans if I'm the athletic director and the fans are losing their minds over this. So, but that's, that's to me, to me, I would put my head luck. coach, I would put my coach in a spot where his entire career depends on March. I just wouldn't do it. If, that, if that's where the fans are, I would have moved on already. Best of luck to the coach after this. Right. It's, it's insane. Like that's, there are certain jobs, which back to your point, like, Oh, Dusty May's afraid of Louisville fans who are already sending his wife death threats, by the way. Are like, they? They sent shirts, death threats. For real? Yes. That's, <laughs> that's part of the up. conversation here is Louisville fans are insane. And yeah, I don't think that is an indictment on you as a coach. If you don't want to deal with Louisville and Kentucky fans, to be clear that I, I it was not reportedly to Dusty May. The report was that Shirts received death threats to his family before he was even offered the Louisville job. Good it's Lord. crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I was just, I was trying to equate when would it be like as a, if you're in that position as an AD, when would it be like, all right come on like you have these talented teams and we and we're losing the double digit seeds every year if, and it, you're comes, not if it comes down to march that should have happened now that should have happened yesterday in the meeting but i don't know because what's that, what's that that's two straight years it's only two, two straight right they lost to it's not even two straight they had the one first round loss then last year they lost to uh who was it two is it three straight I thought they I lost in the second round last year. Oh, uh, maybe I I'm, I can't. I don't know when that St. Peter's year was. Yeah, they beat they beat Providence, lost to Kansas State in the second round, lost to Tang. So we're talking they lost to St. Peter's in the first round as a two seed, and then they made the round of thirty two, lost a close game to Jerome Tang, and then this year got upset again. Upsets happen to everyone, man. It happened to everyone. It sucks, but like. I don't know. They went 
And, and look, the larger issue is they're winning 23 games a year, not 30. Like, maybe if he gets back to a 30-win season, everything's good. But Tough to be Cal, man. Tough. Yes, that, that's what comes with the job. Uh, final topic today, one bold prediction for each Sweet 16 team. I'm excited to hear your creativity on this one. Uh, we're going to go through the bracket. I want you to tell me one thing that's going to happen to each of these teams down the stretch run of this season. We'll start at the top, UConn. What's your bold prediction for UConn? Mm. My, uh, is it okay? I'm th- just let me preface this by saying this. This might be my least bold pick because it's UConn. It's not even a. They're just they're a really good team, so it's not that bold. Uh, I would say at this point, it's a bold prediction that they don't make the Final Four. So they're that good. It's a bold prediction. Yeah. Who's gonna beat them? Illinois. Ooh. Okay. I think there's going to be a Stefan Castle like superstardom game, like a 30 point Stefan Castle. Holy shit, he's the best player on the floor game. Uh, that's my bold prediction. San Diego State. They beat UConn. Uh, I got Jadon Ledee finishing with four points against UConn. Just struggles against Klingon. Total stinker. Klingon stuffs him in a body bag. That is my Ooh. bold prediction. Illinois. They get blown out in this Iowa State game. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I, you picked I, them to I, win I, yesterday. I do, but – and this might just be because of that thread. The energy is insane. The energy is insane. I'm sorry. Like, I get that this Illinois team is playing good ball – I'd put that in quotation marks because this is still the same team that was on the ropes against Ohio State. They beat a Wisconsin team that wasn't that, you know, they got here by not even having to go through Purdue, a team that they probably wouldn't have beat in the Big Ten championship game. They were damn near on the ropes against Nebraska. Like, and then they beat Moorhead State and Duquesne. Let's. There's a real world where this Iowa State team makes this Illinois team look very awful because of what their defense can do. And for a team that everyone says struggles offensively, you know what helps struggling offensively playing against Illinois defense that helps. There's a world where they get blown out in this game. Yeah. I don't think there's a lot of awareness on who Iowa state is, but I don't know if that matters for Illinois. Uh, I don't think they get blown out. I think my bold prediction is Coleman Hawkins records a triple double. Against Iowa State. Ooh, I like that. I've said it's going to be a big Coleman game. I don't think the masks back you down game is going to work in the half court. I don't think Shannon's transition is going to be there. I think they're going to have to play heavily through Coleman. And I don't think Iowa State has an answer for Coleman, quite frankly. He's going to have to have the best game of his career. I think that results in a triple-double for Illinois. Iowa State, bold prediction. This kind of goes against yours. Um, I think Montilovich puts Coleman in a locker. (laughs) That would be interesting. I think Monchilovich puts Coleman in a locker, maybe even bolster a a Monchilovich NBA top 10 pick draft question. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I will predict that whenever Iowa State loses, I don't know when it'll be, but whenever Iowa State loses, they're going to score 40-something points. They will not hit the 50-point mark when they lose in this tournament. That's an odd staple. And I think that offensive stinker is coming. It may not be against Illinois, but it might definitely be against UConn. Uh, Bold prediction for North Carolina. Uh, I'm going to say... If they get to the championship game... Cormac Ryan wins most outstanding player. Hmm. That's crazy. Uh, I, I've i said this on a couple of different previews at this point. If Arizona wins against Clemson, I predict North Carolina will lose because they don't want to see Caleb Love. That's my bold prediction. Alabama. If 
an Alabama front court player outplays slash owns Armando Baycott. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, I believe whenever Alabama loses in this tournament, they will lose by 35 points. Like blowout dog you can, walking. You've been you standing strong on that. I think they stink. I think they they got a very fortunate schedule break here. And uh we'll see if that continues against North Carolina. North Carolina's good. Clemson bold prediction. Ah. Uh, all right, this is weak. But based on his first two games, I think we get a PJ Hall, like a PJ Hall masterclass to get to to win this game against Arizona. And if so, they go to the final four. Okay. I'm gonna go ja- uh sorry, Joe Girard has a Jack Olkey game. Ooh. Like a like a seven to eight made threes game from Joe Girard for their tournament run ends. Okay. Arizona, bull prediction. Their tournament run ends at Clemson while the backcourt combines for 14 points. I'm talking everybody. Love, Boswell, Bradley, KJ Lewis, you want to throw that in there? All those guys. Yeah, I will I'll just go along with that. I think Caleb Love will go three for twenty four from the floor in one of these games. I, I want that number. Write that down. Three for twenty four from Caleb Love in one of these games. Uh bold prediction on Houston. Uh, they they hold all Duke guards under double digits. All right, we're on opposite sides here. Houston's losing to Duke, and five different players will foul out. <laughs> five players foul out. Duke, bold prediction. Tyrese Proctor, triple-double to win. Supposed to be bold, right? Yeah. Duke wins the national championship. You. They were my title pick, man, for uh, a month down the stretch run of the season, and I'm kind of upset I jumped off the bandwagon. I am. Streets are saying you jumped off, so this might happen. Yeah, I know, I know, but that's that's my bold prediction. NC State. It's not this. I DJ Burns dominates Oso Iguodaro on both ends of the floor. DJ Burns announces like somebody, some company makes a DJ Burns candy bar that gets released while NC State is still playing in this tournament. Like the same way Golki had a Turbo Taxi, like DJ Burns is going to announce, like I have a candy bar. It's the Burns bar. I'd, I'd buy it. Yeah. Marquette. Uh, Shaka Smart gets ejected from this game for making contact with a player accidentally. <laughs> uh, that'd be fun. Um, I don't know. This is a gentle. I think I think Cola gets 15 assists against NC State. He's going to dice them. Purdue? Probably not bold, but I'm going to say Fletcher Lawyer 25-point game. That's pretty bold. I believe Purdue will win a game before their run ends in this tournament without Zach Eady. Without him. Like, meaning Zach Eady fouls out and only plays like nine minutes or something. Ooh. That's bold. Purdue wins a game largely without Zach Eady. Uh Gonzaga. Graham E.K. dominates Zach Eady. That seems so unlikely. It is. Uh, I think Gonzaga's going to make less than five threes against Purdue. Hmm. Less than five three. This offense that has been torching everybody for months is just going to not make a shot against Purdue. Creighton.
Baylor Shireman 30 ball and a win. <laughs> there will be a shot on video of a Creighton player visibly crying during this game. For some reason, like either Ashworth or Alexander or Cog or Shireman will be visibly in Adam Morrison style tears mm-hmm. by the end of the Tennessee game. Uh, Tennessee bowl prediction. Muscovy hits a game winner after all the stinkers. Uh, I got Dalton Connect setting the single game NCAA tournament scoring record. You know what that is? I have no idea what it is, but I'd like to find out. And I'd like to find out because Connect has 60 on Creighton with 10 minutes left in the game. I think it could happen. All right, there's our bowl predictions. One big thing presented by Big B. Uh, my one big thing is that I don't want to see how I want to say this. There is a, a hierarchy of blankets. And there's a blanket that I don't think gets enough respect because it's it's always, do you have a heated blanket? Do you have a nice throw blanket? Or do you have that quilted blanket from college that maybe your mom made you before you went that you still got, that you still keep in your basement for sentimental and comfort purposes? I don't think there's enough respect put on weighted blankets. Weighted blankets slap. That's all I want to say. Okay, I think that's fair. I have a weighted blanket. It is a slapper. That's fair. Uh, my one big thing is, are we sure that winning basketball games is even worth it? Like, seriously, like in all in all actuality, like, is what's the point, you know? You really don't have to win. You just got to – you don't have to win. You don't, All you have to do is win enough to get to that little turny-turny and then win some games in the tourney tourney. That's really all you have to do. But like who who even cares? Why? Why? Why what what's the point of all of this? Like a, t- a tourney runs are just flukes anyway. Like who cares? Ooh, you got a call. Like ooh, like I, What's the point in winning? Why not just play the games and stay healthy and have a fun time? Go to dinner after, you know? Never thought about it like that. Huh. That's the show. Enjoy the Sweet 16, everybody.